Good morning, friends. Happy Thursday. Welcome, welcome. I am Sarah Ellis with Jesse James Speeds, and we are here for our weekly project. But today's project is a little extra because we love everything that is extra at JJB, right? So today's project is extra because guess what I have? You guys. Ta-da! So I have February's Magical Mystery Box. Magical Mystery Bead Box, excuse me. And it is amazing, right? Cannot wait to get into this guy. So we're going to unbox the Magical Mystery Bead Box and then we are going to put together a project on the fly. And that's always fun, right? Because you never know what's going to happen. Sometimes it turns out beautifully. Sometimes things go off the rails. Very rarely. But <laughs> it's definitely worth sticking around for because you never know what's going to happen, right? And we get to go through this great box and look at all of the goodies. So I have cheated just a little bit. I, I'm not going to say this is my very first time looking because I have opened. And I've taken a little bit of a peek. It is amazing and i've also looked to see what the rest of you guys have posted online on the secret stash board and on the magical mystery beadbox board so it's not a complete surprise to me but it is going to be a surprise as far as how the project goes because that literally is going to happen on the fly so cross your fingers guys all right so let's say hey to everybody hey suzanne hey janice hey joan how is everybody so before we get into um going through the box and talking a little bit about the box i just wanted for just a second just to tell everybody hi i am well <laughs> i am fine i survived the storms a lot of people asked because um i am here in tennessee and um uh, we got hit with some really, really nasty thunderstorms and tornadoes in the middle of the state. So all of that luckily was to the west of us. Um, we did get really nasty, nasty storms in the middle of the night. It was quite scary, actually. We had golf ball sized hail, at least here. Um, and it was, it was definitely a scary thing. So we survived safely, um, lost a shutter on the house, but for the most part, we were fine. I wish that I could say the same for our neighbors to the west. So you guys, please just keep everybody in, in the western and middle part of the state in your thoughts and prayers because they are definitely going through some rebuilding and some reconstructing and kind of going through some of the damage that was pretty bad. So, all right. On to happy things though, right? Let's talk about this Magical Mystery Bead Box. So for those of you, you guys who are not familiar with the Magical Mystery Bead Box, every month you get one of these guys in the mail and it's so much fun. It is so much fun because it is literally a surprise to the rest of us, right? So the team at Jesse James Speeds, they put together a monthly box and they put so much work and so much effort into creating a story, right? For each box, it is always centered around a theme. There is always just a, just, I don't really know how to explain it other than a story, right? They're trying to tell a story and accomplishing it. They're not trying. They absolutely are telling a story with all of the beads and the tassels and the chain and all of the fun things that you get in the magical mystery bead box are centered around a theme and then you take that theme and it inspires you to create some amazing jewelry. And I got to say, being a creeper online, looking at all of the Magical Mystery Bead Box group postings and the secret stash postings, you guys nail it. Like you take the theme and you run with it and you turn it into the most beautiful and inspiring pieces of jewelry ever. So kudos to you guys because it really kind of comes full circle when the Jesse James Beads team can see like their efforts and their love and their creativity going into the box and then watching it become something tangible outside of the box like turned into amazing pieces of jewelry that you guys are out there walking around wearing as a statement to the magical mystery bead box it's really just it's really humbling and really inspiring that's really all i can say to see all of the things that you guys create it makes me want to be a better designer and it makes the bead team at jesse james beads work even harder to create even more amazing things for you guys so your hard work is appreciated very very much 
All right, so the Magical Mystery Bead Box comes in a couple of different ways that you can get this. You can get this in a three month, a six month, or a 12 month subscription. And right now we have free shipping on those subscriptions. And if you are a brand new subscriber, you can get $10 off by using the coupon code mystery when you go to check out. So if you have been waiting, then now is the opportunity. Grab the, the code, the coupon code, and add that in in your cart so that you can get your $10 off and get your subscription. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. It's like Christmas for a beater, right? Once a month, we get this magical mystery box that comes in and every month it is something spectacular and amazing and it is always so much fun to go through it, right? And sometimes I'll go through mine and then I'll sit it to the side and like, I have to think about it. You know, I have to let it sink in and like I'll take some time to really think about what it is that I want to do with it to like honor what's already there, right? Because I want to do something just as good as what's already there, right? I want to do it justice. Um, and then other times, just right out of the box, I know immediately what I want to make. So we're going to experiment with that a little bit today because we are going to do a project on the fly. Um, also, you guys, this box that we're going through, this is now available on the website in very limited supply, okay? There is only like a handful of these left. So if you do not have a subscription and you did not get this month's box, you can go directly to Jesse James Speeds. There's a link in the little um, description for today's video where you can go directly to it and you can purchase this box, just this one right off of the website and get it so that you can get all of these goodies. But like I said, limited supply. So get it fast, right? Stick around here, see what's in there. Go over there, grab this month's box, <laughs> and then subscribe. Use your code and get your free shipping. All good things. All good things, right? Okay, so let's get down to it because I know that some of you have not seen this month's subscription box and are very excited to see it. And we want to get down to the project part of it too. Hi, Jan. Hi, Dawn. Hey, Rachel. Hi, guys. I've just been chattering away and didn't get a chance to say hi to the rest of you that are coming in here. Hey, Jessica, it's so good to see everybody as always. Oh, and Kathleen. Kathleen says she's late. That's okay. Kathleen, better late than never. <laughs> All right, let's get to it, you guys. Let's open this box up because it's a good one. They're always good ones though, right? Let me fix the lights just a little bit so everybody can see and we will get to it. So, <clears throat> It's so exciting to get these in the mail. I don't know how you guys feel about your your magical mystery bead boxes, but when you get them in the mail, it sticks out, right? Like when I open the mailbox and I see the sticker, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a good day. You know it's gonna be a good day when you get your magical mystery bead box. All right, so like I said, I did cheat. So I have, I have taken a little bit of a peek, but that's all right. All right, so the first thing that comes in every single one of the Magical Mystery Bead Boxes is your card. And the card, I save these, and I say it all the time, I really need to take a picture. So the, um, the cards that come in tell you right off the bat what the theme is, the colors are there, everything here is going to tell you about what's in the box before you even get a chance to look at it. So I know right off the bat that this is gonna have all good Tucson, Western, fantastic things. Farewell to Tucson, which kind of tugs at my heartstrings a little bit because Tucson wasn't that long ago, of course, and saying farewell to Tucson and having to wait until next year to go back, oh, makes me a little bit sad. But it's awesome to have this box that is full of all of the wonderful things from Tucson to keep it in my heart from now until the next time we go. So, farewell Tucson. And like I was saying about the cards, I save all of these and I put these up on my wall so that I have kind of an inspiration board going on with all of my cards from each one of my Magical Mystery Bead Box cards. Um, so what do you guys do with your cards? Do you put your cards up somewhere where you can see them? Do you display them? Let us know what you guys do. On the back, it's going to tell you exactly what's inside. So you're going to have a list of all of the cool things that are in here. And we're just going to go through the list. Okay. So let me take out the packing. And so farewell to Tucson Shorty Strand and Desert Sunrise Shorty Strand. 
You guys, I already looked at these strands because I cheat. And oh man, they're so beautiful. Look at those. The colors are perfection. And can I just say that they nailed it, right? Because I mean, look at the colors. It matches. Everything matches. It's really hard for me. There, get it all in the shot. <laughs> but you can see, like, the card already told me what the colors were going to be. And here they are. And they is absolutely perfect. So... Farewell to Tucson Shorty Strand and the Desert Sunrise, which I'm, I'm going to, I may have these wrong, but I have a feeling this is the Desert Sunrise, and I think this is what we're going to use. I don't know. I could use this one. I could use both of them. I think we're going to, I think we're going to use this strand, but I don't know. I have to think about it as we go through, okay? So, you guys, just, just keep in mind what we've got, and then we will go from there. So, you got two absolutely beautiful Jesse James Speed strands. Mm -hmm. All right, so next is the Tucson Adventure Mix, and that is this guy right here that is full of goodies. And I'm going to dump this out, but I'm going to put it on a bead mat so that... I can move it and you guys don't have to stick around forever as I clean this up. So one of the beads that is in here that I have seen you guys use is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to pull it out so that you can see it for those of you who have not had a chance to look at it. Okay, first of all, the colors, again, gorgeous. Everything works beautifully together, right? And in this little mix are these hearts. Look at these check glass hearts, you guys. They have a flower in them. And I have seen some of the earrings that you guys are creating and some of the pieces that you guys are making with it, and they are so beautiful. Like, this is a beautiful bead all by itself, but the things that you guys have created with these, I'm just, it's always inspiring to see. And you get four of them. They're so darn pretty. Love those. So you've got those guys. There are some bead caps in here that have that kind of antique copper to them, which is very um, westerny feeling to it. I cannot get enough copper, so I'm always happy to see anything copper. Greens, rose colors, oranges, like these fiery orange and red beads. This is just like Tucson sunset to me. That's exactly what it reminds me of. You guys, if you've not had an opportunity to go to Tucson, put it on your bucket list. You will not be disappointed. But luckily for us who maybe didn't get to go to Tucson, you've got all things Tucson here in this collection. And I love the pop of the turquoise in here. I, I don't know. It's just the perfect, the perfect addition, right, to this mix. So I'm already, already in love. Everything is telling this beautiful Tucson story. And we're not even done yet, you guys. We're not even finished yet. Let me move this out of the way and we will move on to the next. So next is a mini metal mix. And that is this. I love this, love this, love this. So let me be weird and take my staples off the weird way. Because you guys know, if you if you guys have watched me for a while, you know that I have this thing about packaging. Like, I cannot just rip into a package. I'm one of those people at Christmas time that, like, I have to very carefully unwrap my presents and I make everybody else crazy while they wait. <laughs> like, really, Sarah? Come on. All right. So, in the metals, what have we got? So, I can already see there are two cactuses in here that are adorable. All right, so we've got this beautiful antique copper heart. And we have all of, oh, there's two. I thought there was just one. There are two. Oh, that would make great earrings. So there are some little leaves. I love those charms. And then these cactus charms that are adorable, right? You can't have Tucson without cactuses. Cacti, if you will. So these will mix in with your strands, with the mix. You could use these in any number of ways. I've seen you guys do some pretty creative things with these. So I can't wait to turn these into something myself. All right, so I'm going to put these over to the side. And we've still got a long way to go, you guys. Turquoise stone set. 
So another thing you cannot talk about Tucson without mentioning is turquoise. Look at this. So, oh yeah, let's open it. I can't just look at the package. That's just not going to cut it, right? I have to dig into this and see it. See it, feel it, have it in my hands. Don't put it past myself to smell it. You never know. All right, so we've got these beautiful nuggets. Look at these. Oh, yep, that's good stuff right there. Definitely screams Tucson, Southwest, Western, just desert goodness. <laughs> and then I love that there are some little guys in here too. So these are fantastic. You can do some really amazing things with these guys. But then you have these little the little disc shaped ones and then these little kind of tube spacers. I, I already have ideas, right? I'm already inspired. I know exactly what it is I'm going to make with these. Not going to be in today's project, but I will take a picture and post because I have a really good idea for what I'm going to do with all of that. So that's just yummy goodness right there. And we're still not done. We've got more things to go. So a Tucson feather pair. This is one of my favorite Magical Mystery Bead Box things. So I don't know if you guys remember, but the January box had um, a pair of feathers in it. Oh man. And they were like, I, I don't even remember if they were creamy. They're like a creamy tan color. It was all about owls and they were amazing. So these are just as amazing. I need more of these in my life, right? I can't decide if I want to make earrings out of these or if I want to like attach these to my hair. Like how fun would that be to put a um, an elastic on these and then stick them in your hair? Oh uh, yeah, that would be so fun. Or you can actually take a bobby pin, right? Or a hairpin and stick it through the loop. And if you put your hair up in like a messy bun and then stick these in, Oh yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do actually. I'm feeling a messy bun with this beautiful bright blue teal colored feathers. I need more of these. So just so you guys know, Jesse James bead team, if you happen to be listening today, more feathers please, they're amazing, amazing. They can be jewelry, they can be in your hair. There's so many different options. Of course I wanna stick those in my hair cause I'm crazy. Okay, so next is a tassel assortment and it would not be Jesse James Bees without tassels, right? You gotta have your tassels and this whole tassel mix is the perfect color combination for what we have. So you've got the turquoise, you've got the peach color, You've got this creamy color, really a beautiful assortment that is going to work really, really well with all of the beads that are in the box, of course, right? I mean, they go to a lot of, they go through a lot of creative process to put these together and it doesn't stop at the tassels. The tassels have to match as well. So there's a lot of love and hard work that goes into creating this wonderful theme with the Magical Mystery Bead Box. All right, so you've got a ton of tassels to work with, and we've got a leather trio. So remember when I said I wouldn't put it past myself to smell <laughs> what I get in my box? This is where that would apply, because I am such a sucker for leather. And it's one of my, you have to give leather like the smell test, right? To check the quality on it. If it doesn't smell like a tack shop, um, if it doesn't smell like, you know, riding horses, then <laughs> um, yeah, okay, you can tell. I, I grew up, I grew up around a lot of animals, riding horses since I could walk. Okay, so this is a, a beautiful piece of leather lace in this like turquoisey deliciousness. I don't even know how to describe this color. It really is like in that turquoise family, but you could also use this in like a green way if you wanted to. So let me just show you that this is gonna work either on either side of the colors, right? Either with your green or with your blue. Really, really beautiful. And then there is another lace piece that is this beautiful kind of maroon brown. This is like a reddish brown color again just goes so well with every, like let me bring the beads back in so you can see just how all of this right look at that it's like meant to be 
of course. So then you're also going to get your toggle clasps and they are in that really beautiful antique copper. And then last but not least, of course, is this braided leather. This could be a bracelet. This could be a tiered section of a necklace. A lot of different things you could do with this. And you've got the crimp ends for this. So this is the end that's going to fit on. I'll slide this in just so that you guys can see just how easy it is to use this. So you just slide that right onto the end. And then you're going to take a pair of pliers. I'm not going to do it, but I am just going to show you just so you can see. So that middle section right there. You want to come in with your pliers and pinch down on that and what you're going to end up doing is crimping that leather into the cord end and that way it's not going to come loose right so you are not going to have to worry about using glue or anything like that this is a really secure uh, binding so super cool that that is included i love that love it when you get the end the you know when you get the findings too it just makes everything better so James says do those strands come in the box of course they do James it wouldn't be a magical mystery bead box without a beautiful strand or two in this case so yes these are in the farewell Tucson box and they're so so pretty all right so we have one more thing and well actually there's two more things in the box but one more on the list and that is the chain reaction so you can't have a magical mystery bead box without the chain reaction and this stuff is so much fun you can wear it by itself or you can add it to a design and that's I think that's what we're gonna do today I think we're gonna use some of this chain reaction and we're gonna make ourselves a little tassel out of our chain reaction and use one of our strands and let's just put together our quick little necklace and show off all of the beautiful goodies that are included in this box all right, so there is your chain reaction, and all of the chain reactions are, are different, right? The metal colors that you get are different, and then the bead colors are going to be different, but they work with each theme. So, like, if the theme were underwater, then obviously you'd have some chain reaction that would go with your underwater theme. So this one works beautifully, again, with Farewell to Tucson. We've got this beautiful warm gold colored metal and this beautiful maroon glass bead that is in there. And like I said, you can wear this stuff by itself and it is stunning. We're going to mix it into our design for today though. All right. So last but not least, we do have one more thing and this is always a fun little extra that is included. So in every box, there is a what's this. And sometimes it's just a little extra something, just an extra treat for you, or it is a a quick little project that is like instant gratification jewelry, right? So this one is, what's this? A rustic charm from Lipstick Ranch, you guys. And there's also a card for Lipstick Ranch so that you can look them up. Lipstick Ranch has some amazing metal pieces. And if you're not familiar with Lipstick Ranch, I, I suggest going over to Instagram first and foremost and typing in Lipstick Ranch and taking a look at some of the beautiful things. So this beautiful sunflower charm is what is included. And man, that's pretty. Like I can't, I don't know. I can't decide if I want to add this to the piece today or... I'm not sure. I think I'm going to use one of the hearts, but gosh, that's pretty. So, so pretty. So that is everything that is in your box. Let me pull in this mess that I have created here just to give you kind of like a, 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 a <laughs> give you a look at this mess that I have created. Check out my mess, you guys. <laughs> the fan is going and I'm afraid my feathers are going to blow away. But just to kind of give you a look at like all of the goodies all together so you can see just how much stuff is included because it is such a bargain. I don't know if you guys have ever taken the time to like price out everything that is in a magical mystery bead box and like tried to figure out what it would cost to buy them all individually. I don't think that you guys... Um, for those of you who, who have done that, you you know like what a amazing deal that you're getting here. Plus the fact that, you know, the B team is going like above and beyond to put together this theme for you. So it's like a whole experience that happens with the Magical Mystery Bead Box. Um, but it really is as far as a value is concerned, like you can't beat this. You absolutely cannot beat this because just buying the leather individually from somewhere else is gonna it's yeah you guys know you guys know you shop for bead stuff you understand so this is the beautiful assortment 
from Farewell Tucson. I'm so sad to say goodbye to Tucson, but it can live on in my heart with all of these wonderful goodies that we are going to put together and create something that we can wear for a while. So let's do that. Let's put together a piece of jewelry. Let's see how it goes. You never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's put together a piece of jewelry. Let's make a necklace and let's use this guy. I've got some ideas. Let's, let's put this together. So you guys, let me know, what are your favorite things about Jesse James beads? Like the magical mystery bead boxes, what's your favorite thing from the magical mystery bead boxes? Like what is the one thing that you get that you just absolutely love every time you get them? Or just from Jesse James beads in general, like what are, what are you guys loving out there? Because you know that at Jesse James Beads, we wanna give you guys more of what you want. So it's important for us to get your feedback. You know, we wanna know so we can give you guys what you, what you want. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, Mimi says that is a lot. Wow, yeah, it is a lot. It's, it's always an amazing amount of stuff. Like you open the box and it just keeps coming. It's like it just keeps giving you good stuff. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking as far as a necklace is concerned. So let's use this strand just like this, but I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take this middle bead and I'm going to turn it sideways, right? And let's wire wrap it, give it a loop so that we can hang something from it. Let's see. I think we'll put a heart here. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do a heart or a bead, but I think I'm going to do the heart here in the middle. And then let's use some chain reaction and create a chain tassel to hang here, right? If you just wanna kinda of envision what we're gonna do, because this totally is on the fly. <laughs> There's no telling how this is gonna turn out, but you're gonna be with me the whole ride, okay? So let's do that, a strand and a tassel, and then we can use some more of the chain reaction for the length on this, but I do want to remind you that you could also use your leather for this as well for the length, but just for time's sake, let's stick with the chain reaction um, because it's beautiful, of course, and because we've got, we've got plenty of it. So let's do that. So I think the first thing that we ought to do is probably make our tassel just because I feel like this is gonna be the part that takes the longest. So let's do that first. And I won't be crazy about the packaging here. I will just open it. Oh, look, I even did a good job just busting it open like that. So, one of the cool things about the chain reaction is that it always comes with this jump ring on it, right? So you can take the jump ring and it's a um, one of those multi-layer jump rings. Like it's, you know, it's a, it's a spring ring, if you will. So we're going to use that. I'm not just going to pop that off of there and leave it. We're going to use that as the top portion of our tassel. But what I want is I do want to take some of this off. And so I think what I want is I want to make kind of a long tassel. So I want the beads to be on the bottom. So we're gonna use like this chain length here and then the bead on the bottom. And so to do that, I'm just gonna snip off the little jump ring that is in between here, All right? So there's one little section. This is gonna be a really long tassel. That's okay, I kinda, kinda like that. Okay, so now I'm going, to, I got rid of the jump ring, but there is that, that loop here. So I'm gonna thread this back on, right? And to open that, that split ring, I just, I just thread my, my pliers through there. So that I don't have to use my fingernails to do it. You guys know I just got rid of some acrylic, so my fingernails are in pretty, pretty pitiful shape at the moment. So I'm trying to avoid any kind of fingernail usage. All right, so there's two. I'm gonna trim that off. I say you guys know, not everybody knows that, but some of you know that I had my nails done for Tucson and then realized very quickly that it is nearly impossible to make jewelry with a fake appendage. <laughs> That's what it felt like. <laughs> All right, I could not, I could not function with those nails. Okay, so again, I'm gonna take another end, right, and thread that back on, okay? Bring that down and I'm gonna trim off that little jump ring, okay? So for those of you who are just joining us, welcome in, by the way. 
Um, I'm Sarah Ellis, Jesse James with Jesse James Speeds, and we unboxed, so you may want to go back and watch the replay, we unboxed the February Magical Mystery Bead Box from Jesse James Speeds, and we are now creating an on-the-fly necklace using some of the goodies that were in the box, and the question for everyone is, what are your favorite things from Jesse James Speeds, and what are your favorite things from the Magical Mystery Bead Box? So, let's see. I think we've got enough for two more. That's going to be a fun tassel. Oh, I guess I need to trim that off first. So, if you guys will let us know in the comments what you love. And trust us, we're listening. We hear you. Want to give you more of what you want. So, I'm threading on another one. All right. And... I'm going to trim that one off. So now I've got enough for one more. And we will be finished with our little tassel here. Um, one thing to note, though, is that at the bottom of each one of the beads, if I get that open, um, on the bottom of each one of the, of the beads here, those rondelles on the bottom, is a loop where it is finished, right? So the wrap loop on the bottom, if you wanted to, you could add another bead here, right? You could add another dangle down here. You could add these beautiful little pieces of turquoise just to give it a, a pop of turquoise down at the bottom. That would be really, really pretty. Um, anything else that you wanted to use, really, a little pop of the green. So any of the beads from the mix, you could add to the bottom since you still have that loop at the bottom. I'm just going to leave mine for now. But I feel like you definitely could dress this tassel up even more if you wanted to. This is a really long and in charge tassel, but I'm feeling it, you guys. I really, really like it. So that's going to be the tassel. And remember, we still have leftover chain, so I didn't use it all the way up. Um, let's see. Let's add, I said we were going to add this heart. So let's make the heart kind of the go-between. Um, between our our bead here Look at that. that's gonna be pretty I think right what do you guys think that's gonna be that's gonna be a pretty little necklace to have okay so I just kind of want to decide like should I use jump rings in between should I just wire wrap directly let's wire wrap directly um, this guy to this just because you guys are a fan of wrapped loops for some weird reason <laughs> let's do that shall we it wouldn't be a project with Sarah Ellis if we didn't do a loop of some variety right okay so I have a small little piece of 22 gauge wire and <clears throat> let me move this out of the way for just a second so we're going to do a loop on the bottom and a loop on the top so I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers I'm coming down about an inch inch and a half and I'm going to bend that wire backwards so when you take it off the pliers you've got a backwards seven and you need your round nose pliers. So we're gonna come in with the round nose pliers, grab that wire, guide it up and over, and on around, okay? So that's what we've got so far. Now, I want to take this and I'm gonna just take the tail end of this and put it through that jump ring, right? And then I just wanna snap these two together. Just like that. Oh, <laughs> like came undone. There we go. Okay, so I've hooked that that jump ring, or I'm sorry, yes, the jump ring. I've hooked the jump ring and the loop together without anything in between. So we're not going to use a jump ring here. We're just going to connect it directly like that. So now I'm going to use my chain nose or my bent chain nose pliers to come in and grab that loop, and I'm going to switch hands. I'm going to take this straight section, this little tail here and wrap around the long section of the wire. We're gonna go around about three times, okay? And then I'm gonna trim that off, okay? So now we have a wraps loop and our wire, so we're ready to add our bead. Let's thread on this guy, this heart bead, and bring that down. Okay, kind of line everything up. Okay, so there's that. 
that's super cute all by itself. Like that would make a cool keychain, right? I think that you could that make a great earring too, actually. A lot of cool stuff. Okay, so coming in with the chain nose pliers because we're just gonna do another wrap loop here on the top. And so I'm bending that wire. See where I'm grabbing the wire right as it is exiting? And when I take my pliers away, I've got that little amount of space right there. That's the amount of space I need to bring my round nose pliers in. Just slide those in. And then we're gonna go up and over. And then I'm gonna adjust the grip and bring this on around. So I'm kind of speeding through these wrapped loops today, you guys, but just in case you need some extra help with your wrapped loops, we have a great Facebook Live that you can watch a replay of. And hopefully somebody can drop the link. If not, I can drop the link when I'm over or when this is over so that you guys can see it, where I went really slowly through the wrapped loops and walked through them like a step at a time. So if you need to practice and you need to see that in super slow motion, we do have a Facebook Live where you can go back and watch that over and over and over again. And it's great because you can stop it and start it and stop and start it, right? And you can rewind. And if you need any extra help with those wrapped loops, it's a great resource, <laughs> whoa, resource to have. All right, so we've got our wrapped loops, right? So now we have the option here to add this to the rest of our necklace. So let's put that together really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this strand apart and we're gonna restring it, but, and I wanna keep it like in the exact same order that it is, but that middle bead, I wanna turn it on its side. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to Pull this thread out very, very, the bead string wire very, very carefully, trying to, oh, uh, trying to keep everything in order. That's all right. We'll figure it out. Okay, so this was the middle bead, and he obviously, if he's going this direction, there's nowhere to connect him to this. So we're going to have to turn him up and down, and we're going to give him a wrap loop on the top and on the bottom so that we can string him on with his loop on the top, but then attach him to the heart down here on the bottom. So we're gonna need another piece of the 22 gauge wire for that. Let me just trim that off and get that ready to go, okay? And, oh yeah, so there's the link, you guys. It just got dropped, thank you, thank you. Jewelry Making 101, how to make a wire wrapped loop. So that is there. If you guys need that extra practice on your wrapped loops, that video is there. You can watch it over and over again. And really, really practice your wrapped loops. So there's our backward seven. And coming in with our round nose pliers to go up and over, right? And move the pliers out of the way to bring it on around. So before I do the wrapping, I do want to go ahead and since we're kind of leaving out jump rings here. I'm gonna take the tail end of this and I'm gonna slide it through the loop that we made on the top of our heart and just snap those two together, okay? And bent chain nose pliers, you can use your regular chain nose pliers for this. I like to use the bent chain nose pliers because see the curve in the bend? That really keeps that point of the pliers out of my way while holding everything together so that I can still get in here and do the wraps and I don't have to worry about working around the point of the pliers. So that comes in handy for sure. Okay, just gonna trim that off. And now we're ready to add our bead. So we're gonna thread on our beautiful boho bead. Right, oh, that's so pretty. That's gonna be really, really pretty. Okay, so taking a look at everything and we're gonna go ahead and do another wrapped loop here at the top because that's where we are going to actually hang this on our necklace. And I'm thinking that just to give this a little extra space, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my pliers this direction. See how the loop on the bottom here is going side to side? So you have to turn it this way to actually see the loop, okay? Keeping all of those little things in mind as I'm moving forward. So what I'm gonna do is I want the loop up here on the top to go 
facing us so that I can add a jump ring. And the reason I'm gonna add a jump ring is just because this is such a, a large bead. I feel like if we just string this on just like it is, it may crowd out some of the other beads. So to give it a little extra room, we are gonna add an additional jump ring to this and then thread it on the jump ring onto our string of beads. It'll make sense here in just a second. So just, just follow with me here. So I'm turning the wire, right? I have way more wire than I would ever need for this. Coming in with our round nose pliers, going up and over, adjusting and coming on around. And I'm gonna switch hands to do the wire, the wire wrapping here. Okay, so there is our loop at the top of our bead and I'm gonna trim off this tail and fortunately, this is a long enough tail to use for something else. So I'm just gonna sit that to the side because we may need that, I don't know. Don't know where it's gonna go. All right, so from here, let's add a six millimeter jump ring to this. And <clears throat> that will be the part that we actually thread on to our, our bead section here. So I'm just getting a six millimeter jump ring using two pairs of pliers to open that up. And I'm gonna close that back. Always working laterally, right? walking and it open and walking it closed. Don't ever wanna pull those jump rings apart. All right, so there's that. So now we're ready to do some stringing here. So let me sit this to the side just for a second, just so that it is out of the way. And I'm gonna bring in a piece of our bead stringing wire and we will create some little crimps here. So we don't really need a long section of this. I always cut way more than I need, but that's just that's just me. And I am gonna use two jump rings here. I'm not gonna use any wire guardians or anything like that for this. We're just gonna do some simple straight stringing on this. So I'm not gonna get too crazy. All right, so I've taken the end of my bead stringing wire. I'm gonna thread that through a, um, a crimp tube. I'm just using a tube instead of a bead, but it is completely up to you. You can use whichever one you want. And then I'm gonna thread the end of that through a jump ring, and then I'm gonna loop it around and go back through that crimp tube, okay? Just like that. So I'm taking the tail end through the crimp, and then I'm just gonna pull that crimp up so that I don't have a huge loop here, okay? You don't wanna pull it up too tight. You still want to have some wiggle room there. And then I'm gonna come in with my standard crimper and I'm gonna, let me switch hands here. So I'm gonna use the back notch of the crimper tool, right? This one that is closest to my hand. And you wanna make sure that the bead stringing wire is running parallel on the inside of that crimp bead that they're not crisscrossing each other. And it might help to pull them apart just like so, double check it Make sure that you've got everything where it needs to be on the inside. I just said that very Southern. Did anybody catch that? <laughs> you can tell where I'm from today. <laughs> All right, my Southern is, my Southern's coming out. Okay, so crimp that on that back notch and then we wanna bring it to the front notch and we're gonna turn it sideways and then close it. And all that's gonna do is just really kind of clean that um, crimp bead up, right? Just keep it nice and compact. Now you can trim off your tail if you want to, you can thread it through a bead, totally up to you. And I'm just gonna leave it cause I am gonna thread it through a bead or two. And let's see here. So let's thread on our beads. I'm trying to keep the pattern exactly what it was, but now my beads are in kind of a mess. So I might not get it exact, but we'll try. All right, so there's our first bead. And then this little flat, look at this guy. Look at that, look at the detail, that's so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna thread that one on. And then one of these awesome rondelles, it's kind of cactusy green, I love that. Okay, another boho bead. And now we're gonna do some bead caps in this beautiful antique copper color, a glass pearl another one of the bead caps and I will move my hands out of the way so you guys can see this in just a second. I'm just kind of cradling everything together here for a minute. Okay, so that's halfway. 
right? So the next thing that would come would be that big boho bead that we took out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add, I'm gonna add, let's see, what should we add to this? I'm gonna add these little discs here, these little turquoise discs. I'm gonna add one of those on either side of our necklace. So there's one, and then I'm gonna thread on the six millimeter jump ring that has our tassel and just kind of see how it sits with the, with those little turquoise. Put both of them on to kind of look at it and see, maybe I need to use a different bead. So I just want something to sandwich that, that jump ring between. I don't know if that's the answer or not. I don't think so. So let's take these off. Let's try something different. Let's see, let's use what do we got over here in our mix? So are those guys. So you're truly getting to see things on the fly here. <laughs> Never know what you're gonna get. Okay, so let's use some of these little round beads. That might be a better choice. So I'm gonna thread on one of these kind of creamy colored round beads. We'll thread our jump ring on. And whoops another one of the cream beads, and then let's see how that sandwiches that six millimeter jump ring. I want it to look good, but I also want it to be secure, right? So what I want is I want those two beads to be touching, right? And that jump ring to, to be secure in between there, but I really want the two beads that are next to each other to touch each other inside the six millimeter jump ring. Do you see what I'm saying? So that that six millimeter jump ring is not vulnerable. Um, there's not, I don't really know how else to explain it. It's, it just gives it more security to have those two beads on either side of it touching. I really don't really know how else to explain it. You just kind of have to take my word for it. You just don't want that jump ring to be a, a lonely jump ring hanging on a thin piece of bead stringing wire between two beads because it makes it vulnerable to being caught on something and opening up and slipping through this bead stringing wire, slipping through the opening on the jump ring, right? So if you, if you can sandwich it in there and the two beads touch each other, then your jump ring is not touching the bead stringing wire. So that's not something that you have to worry about, okay? I hope I explained that, explain that well, because I feel like that's an important little thing that sometimes gets overlooked, okay? So now I'm just gonna repeat the pattern on the other side, okay? Just kind of mirroring what we've already done. And then we will crimp the end and we will add our chain to the rest of this and our necklace will be done. And hopefully I've given you some inspiration that you can take and do something completely different with, right? I mean, you can certainly recreate this exactly as I have it, or you can take the same concept and use it a million different ways with all of the beautiful beads that are included in the Magical Mystery Bead Box. Okay, so there is that, and we are ready to crimp the end. So I'm gonna slide on one of my crimp tubes, and I'm gonna loop that through a six millimeter jump ring. That's gonna be our connection point for our uh, chain reaction, okay? So I'm gonna pull all of this down, and in order to keep that, those two wires from crisscrossing inside, the uh, crimp bead, I'm actually gonna thread this through another bead. Before I pull everything down. Okay, so that's really just gonna kind of help to make sure that those wires on the inside, like I said, of that crimp tube are not crisscrossing each other. And I've got the leverage on the bead stringing wire down here instead of right up here where it can make this funny little angle that I just don't like. <laughs> so a lot of different reasons why I do it that way. Um, and a lot of it has to do with not, um, not so much the the crimping, but just the way that it ends up looking up there, and I just don't like it. So, same thing, back notch, crimp, and then we're gonna move that to the front notch of the crimper 
tool here and tidy up that little crimp tube. And then we are going to trim off our tail because we don't need it. There's no, no reason to thread that through anything else. If you've crimped correctly, you don't have to worry about that security. So look how pretty that is. I'm kind of surprised at myself, this whole on the fly thing. You never know how how that's gonna turn out. Sometimes, you know, if you design on the fly, like there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure to design on the fly. And if it turns into something just really ugly, which I don't think is gonna happen no matter what you design with these beads, right? You can't go wrong. The color choice is just amazing. Okay, so now all we need to do to this to create just a finished piece of jewelry is we are going to add our chain reaction to this. So this is gonna bring this metal from our tassel down at the bottom and this beautiful maroon color bead. So we're taking all of this that is down here at the bottom and we're just gonna bring it up into the rest of the necklace. Because this is a nice short section, you're still gonna be able to see some of the chain reaction. So it actually does become part of the design. It's not actually gonna be hidden in your hair or anything like that. You are gonna see it. Um, However, should you decide that you don't want to use the chain reaction for the length portion of this necklace, you don't have to because remember, you've got these two, well, you've actually got three beautiful pieces of leather that were included in your Magical Mystery Bead Box and you could use those for the length and this is small enough that you could thread beads on so you could thread some beads and tie some knots. Really a lot of different options, right? Which is what makes the Magical Mystery Bead Boxes so amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the split ring here and decide how much. And I'm actually gonna leave it on one end because I'm gonna use that as my, my connection. So how long do I want this to be? I'm gonna go just like that. I don't want this to be super, super long. So, but you can, like this is completely adjustable as far as like what you want, right? So I've trimmed off just like we did on the tassel so that I have this wrapped loop. And I'm gonna open up the jump ring here, which we haven't opened previously, okay? So just keep that in mind. I, I haven't already opened this. This is the first time we're actually opening that jump ring. I'm gonna thread on that wrapped loop Okay, and close that back. So now I, I have one of these beautiful maroon beads is right up here. So that's that's also gonna bring that color. Like, it's, so it's not way back here, it's up here at the front. We are definitely gonna see it. And same thing over here. So I'm just gonna open this up and thread that on and close that back. And I want my two pieces of chain to be even. So I need to get rid of this one right here. And that'll make it even. I've still got some chain reaction. So if I wanted to make some really simple earrings, right? Just add an ear wire to this. I've got a really long, beautiful drop here and then another really long, beautiful drop here. So that's gonna bring that tassel kind of feeling all the way up into the earrings as well if you wanted to, right? Or you've got enough that you could create part of a bracelet. You could double this up and use it for half of a bracelet and then bead the rest of it. Totally up to you. Lot of different options here. So the last thing I need is a clasp. And there's actually some clasps in here, but I'm using the gold chain. And so I think I'm gonna skip the copper toggle for this and I'm just going to go with a straight um, lobster clasp because I want, the, these are so beautiful, I want to bring this like to the front of a design. So I'm going to save that for something else. Um, let me grab a clasp and you know what you guys, I actually, I'm going to use, sorry I don't mean to be far away, I'm going to use a silver clasp on this just because this is what's closest to me. But I will change this up before before I take any official pictures of this, um, this is just what is close by. And like I said, it's on the fly, so you never know, you never know. All right, so I'm just gonna open up a six millimeter jump ring and thread that through the loop on the end of my chain reaction, add my jump or my lobster clasp and close that back. 
and we're done you guys we're done we have a really beautiful necklace that is really just I'm I'm amazed at how beautiful that turned out in my head it didn't even look as good and it's just it's all about the beads you guys it is all about the beads so I'm gonna put this on a bust and I'm gonna flip you around so that you can see this hanging and really kind of get a feel for what it looks like if you were to have this on. And then we will say goodbye for the day. And all right, so let me get you guys back around. Hi guys, move those lights, bright lights. Jane, you're so silly, grabbing a bus. I had to grab a bus. <laughs> Oh, all of the, all of the inner 12 year old boys in, inside of us all are laughing. Oh my goodness. Look at baby. Look how pretty. So I wish my bust was a little bigger. <laughs> I wish, I couldn't help myself. Okay. <laughs> Again, 12 year old boy right here. <laughs> so if my bust were a little bit bigger, you would get a little bit better um, feel for this. And you can see how adjusting, I have my hand here so that it's like, so you can really kind of see the, um, the tassel. But um, you can adjust this, of course, and make this a short necklace, which I have done. There's only, I did loop a little bit of the length up in the back just so that you guys could, you know, really see it all. It is a little bit longer than what I have the way that it is showing. But you could use that extra length of the uh, chain reaction to make this a really long necklace or the leather and make a really, really long necklace out of this. So it is completely up to you as far as where you want this to fall on the body, if you will. Um, but I think it turned out beautifully. And I have to say, it's because of the beads, right? This design is relatively easy. It's very straightforward. We just did some stringing. We did a couple of wrapped loops, but nothing out of the ordinary. Those wrapped loops could just as easily have been simple loops without, you know, the spiraling or any of the wire wrapping. You could have just done simple loops. Um, you can actually use bead stringing wire here instead if that's what you are comfortable using, right? You could just have a second piece of bead stringing wire here and use crimps if you wanted to forego all of the wire wrapping. Um, so a lot of different options. It's a simple, simple design in theory but it's the beads that take that like to the next level and i gotta say jesse james beads bead team you guys nailed it you told the story i feel tucson in every single bit of this piece and i'm just really really pleased with it i think well sorry you guys i feel like it turned out beautifully um any of the like i know i just keep on and keep on but see we had the other strand here we could have just as easily used this strand, which I'm not showing you very well, um, right? We could have used this strand in place of the other strand because you got two in this box and it would, it would be beautiful too because it all works together. That's what makes it so amazing. All right, so that's it for me, you guys. I have had fun. It's a little intimidating to do designs on the fly because you never know what's going to happen but I'm happy to say that it turned out really well I think this is a beautiful necklace I will get some beauty shots of this and have those online for you guys to see so that you can look back at this if you need some inspiration and that's it you guys it's here we are at the end of another week right just one more day and it will be the weekend so speaking of if you guys would like to see another design using this amazing magical mystery bead box join me tomorrow at 12 p.m i've bumped it back an hour so at 12 p.m come over to sarah ellis designs where i'm going to be using again some of these amazing beads from the february magical mystery bead box from jesse james beads to create something else fun i don't even know what it's going to be and um, tonight at 6.30 on the Silver, Silk, and More Facebook page, I will be there to do another design. And we are using Paris in the Rain. And it's just a beautiful mix of Jesse James beads and some gorgeous Silver Silk from Miele. So come and join me for that as well. If not, I will see you guys again, same time, same place next week. If I don't see you again, have a wonderful afternoon and a great rest of the week and enjoy your weekend. Bye guys.